Welcome everybody. My name is Mina Jane and I'm the director of the Ashland Public Library in Massachusetts. And as you can tell from the chat, we have people here from all over the country. It's so exciting to be here with Megumi Ayanui. Am I saying that right? In no way. In, in no, no way. way. I knew I was going to say that wrong. I, I was practicing <laughs> <So> earlier. <laughs> in no way. And, um, but I'm going to talk about her in just a second. Uh, I want to say thanks to the Friends of the Ashland Public Library for supporting all of our programs. I would like to thank Megumi for letting us share this program with other libraries. As you can see, people are coming from all, um, all over uh, Massachusetts because libraries just jumped on this program because it's super awesome. And when libraries work together, we just make magic. So it's wonderful. Um, you can buy uh, signed books of Megumi's book, um, this what is it called? Oh my gosh, I'm having a day, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> the Soul of Gift Wrapping from Aesop's Fable, our very favorite indie bookstore. I will put a link to that in the chat. And if you have questions for Megumi, please put them in the Q&A because I, the chat goes by, as you can tell, very quickly. So I... Um, you know, I usually take questions from the q and This program is being recorded and I will send out a link to everybody who is signed up um, maybe an hour or so after the program. So without further ado, Megumi Ayanui is here because today is her book birthday, uh, The Soul of Gift Wrapping. And I'm so excited about this because as you can tell from the beautiful pictures, Megumi has a, an eye for gorgeousness. So Welcome, Megumi. Thank you so much for being here. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how exciting today is for you. Yeah, well, thank you so much for inviting me. And I really want to thank you for your foresight because you were really one of the first people that reached out to me to schedule this particular day. And of course, at that time when we talked, I didn't have any idea what this day would feel like, Or, but it was incredibly special that I get to share this day with um, my actual launch day um, being a first time experience for me. I, I really don't know what to expect, but I realize this is a big day and uh, to be able to share it with uh, with you and the library patrons and, and friends I know that are that are, are a few of them I'd like to say hello to some of my friends out there that are joining us today um, and um, and what an honor that is to to be able to share what I love uh, with everyone I uh, also wanted to start I know we're here to talk about my book but you and I had a first conversation about our love for libraries and I know you were attracted to the uh, use of library cards or books to wrap gifts. So I sort of purposely started off uh, uh, with a few gifts that we can look of how we can kind of transform some book pages or old library cards into um, and gifts. And I love libraries, so I collect some of these things. And, and friends have actually given me things. Um, the American Craft Council was giving out library cards, and so uh, I got a stack of them. And so um, just to transform them into gifts are just a joy for me. So I thought I'd share that before I went into even my book. Uh, I hope you can get a little view of them <laughs> and share our love for that. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so my book, The Soul of Gift Wrapping, is, uh, is releasing today. And uh, it's, it feels like the birth of a child almost. Um, I feel like it's, it's uh, something that was, you know, nurtured within me for such a long time, close to three years. And uh, to have it finally come out in the world feels exciting, but it's also a little daunting because I do share some very personal stories and memories. And um, it, it's, it's actually quite um, a book that that uh, I have my heart and soul into. So um, I'm so glad that I get to be able to now talk about it um, and be able to share some of the themes that I've learned from it. I um, People always ask me, you know, why are you interested in gap, gift wrapping or what got, what was motivated you to get into wrapping? And for myself, I mean, it was actually a hard question. I always felt that there was something about it that drew me to it, but then to articulate it was, uh, was difficult. I knew that it was a form of gratitude practice in the culture and Japanese tradition and cultures. And so I knew that it was an expression of gratitude. So I had a sense of that. But I think it was really, um, and why I appreciate books, and I think libraries have a place in our world in this way as well, because you can only through books, I think, explore something very deeply. And, uh, and I really threw writing the book and through actually going through it, I think I really was able to go into some of those deeper questions like why do we wrap our gifts and what makes it meaningful? And um, and I've been teaching uh, wrapping 
uh, workshops and things like that. And invariably people um, come to say, um, you know, ask me about more sustainable wrapping methods, or is there a, a method that you can wrap without tape and these types of questions. And I think over the decade or over a decade that I've been doing this, I feel like I've um, wanted to sort of incorporate a lot of those um, suggestions or uh, inquiries that came in. And I took on the challenge of not only um, talking about the meaning of wrapping, but also to come up with wrapping methods um, that are also conscientious of um, waste or the environment. Um, and uh, and so I actually took on this challenge of the entire book is, is you don't use tape for any of the wrapping methods that I introduce. So, <laughs> Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that. I didn't know quite how to structure today because it's such an open um, kind of a conversation. But just as a starting point, I kind of thought what I'd do is sort of um, divide it into the part that the book's divided, which is I address um, why do we wrap our gifts and what makes it meaningful. And for me, it's um, a form of a gratitude practice that's inspired by my Japanese um, upbringing. Mm -hmm. and, but I also incorporate a lot of the wrapping culture uh, of myself growing up here in my designs and things as well. And then the second part is, you know, how do we wrap in a way that nurtures our soul and other people and is also conscientious of our environment. And then we'll go into some wrapping techniques that I both curated, I've come up with, um, I kind of discovered through the research and, you know, kind of pulled some of those in and to talk about a little bit about the wrapping styles. Uh, and then uh, and then if there's any questions, then we can kind of address them maybe at the end or if you have anything questions in between your free to. Okay. Um... So let me just go back a little bit because I'll be asking questions sort of throughout as I as they come to me. But um, I want to go back to your history a little bit um, because. Wrapping can be, and, and obviously from what we see on the screen, is an art form. So have you had a history of being an artist of, in some way? And, and, and something about this particularly drew you? Um, I think I have an, a, an innate sense of creativity uh, in myself that I've always wanted to somewhat explore. I don't think I was actually would say that I was always a creative person necessarily, but I always was drawn to that. And in fact, I should, you know, uh, credit libraries because I think I discovered a lot of art books in the libraries, knowing that there was another culture out there that valued art and that, you know, that actually um, that there were people that made, you know, life, uh, you know, um, work out of art and things. So, um, but um, what I had, and sh I was sharing this with someone the other day in conversation that um, I started actually rapping um, when my children were very young. And uh, one of the ways that I uh, directed my creative energy, uh, because when I was raising kids, it's obviously so busy. And um, we, I would just go to the basement and I would love wrapping gifts for teachers or um, the volunteers at school or people that were always um, really making, you know, such being such a support to us. And I, and then in those few minutes that I could practice that, I could make it kind of creative and use that opportunity to um, just kind of explore my own creativity. And, and that's sort of how it sort of began as um, kind of how I, I, if I were to reflect on it, I think that's sort of what I did. It was just a great time for me that I could uh, do both things that I could, you know, really show appreciation for the people around um, us at the time. And also I could then put my myself, the artistic part of me could then be um, put into that. I think that's kind of how it began. Um, but what and, you're, I'm sorry to interrupt, but like, but what you're saying is that you don't need to be an artist, quote unquote, to actually do this wrapping. You just need to want to have an, a creative outlet. And then to you had the motivation because you had people around you that were that you were grateful for or that attributed you could attribute some of your gratitude to towards yeah and I think you know I I always um the hardest thing for me to say is when people look at the wrapping as um just an aesthetic aspect of it saying oh I could never do this or I'm not sure how you have the time to do this because it really wasn't about uh, like an expression of talent or, you know, skill. It was really an expression of gratitude for myself. Like I put myself into making something really, uh, you know, 
that's something that expressed something about that person to me mm -hmm. or, you know, and so it really, uh, I, I, if I were to say how it would have been to receive, it would be to just receive the intention of that. And um, to me, art is, there's no uh, competition in art in the sense, because expression is to me just exemplative of what's in your internal world. And we get to kind of share it and we all get different expressions. And so in my book, um, what I uh, what I say is that I really kind of want it to be more a starting point, like a, a source of inspiration for you to then explore your ways of how you want to express gratitude and how um, how you want to um, imbue um, a lot of uh, about your uh, sense of uh, expression through rapping. And um, and so that's sort of how I look at it as an art form is that it's really imbuing something of your internal world and how you feel and then putting it into physical form. And what I thought was really interesting in my research in Japanese traditions is that uh, is that actually there are things that have been put in place in the past to imbue feelings and emotions in packaging, which is like through foldings or through pleading or the different number of folds that express certain things. And so in, in that cultural context, there's actually a way that feelings or emotions can be conveyed through folds or you know, uh, different methods. And so that's why the title of my book, Creative Techniques for Expressing Gratitude, is sort of uh, kind of inspired by this idea that actually there's historic precedence in some sense of that, that people ha have used um, different ways of expression through paper, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's so fascinating to me because also Japanese culture um, growing up is something that I'm familiar with is that it's not a very verbal culture. Um, there's no really expressions of love is not saying I love you, uh, but it's through, you know, uh, through gestures and presentations and through, through very more subtle actions. Mm -hmm. And, um, and some of the most profound memories to me, uh, and I'm going to share one with you is how I started the book, but I look back at like how my mother would wrap sandwiches um, just perfectly folded with the flap, you know, inside so the sandwich wouldn't get soggy. And um, or sometimes when um, I would be doing homework, I would get a Japanese treat, but she would put it on a folded paper. And so for me, I think um, I think paper folding, uh, these types of um, care put into that type of um, action or is is sort of associated with with love for me mm -hmm. and so uh, and I think this is something that sometimes the silent language is not often understood and I think that impetus for me to write want to write the book so much is that in the way that I'm moved by all of this but I I don't feel like it's, it's as understood or it's seen and so I really wanted to bring a voice uh to that language which is somewhat silent but it it's also quite depth in depth in meaning <laughs> so i mean it sounds to me like what you're saying is that uh, it's interesting that the the just juxtaposition between you know your japanese heritage and being in america where sometimes gift giving is like this free for all where we don't it doesn't seem as intentional as what you're saying is what you're describing and yet I do know people who are very, very careful about how they, how they wrap things for like for Christmas for their children, that everybody gets a different wrapping paper or, you know, something like that. So it's more, as I said, intentional um, in thinking about ma really making it special for somebody. Yeah. And I, I'm really flattered when people say that to me that, oh, thank you for being the voice because this is why, you know, you put words to why I love to rap. And I said, <laughs> yes, I, I know. I, I mean, I do speak for, I think, those people that that really do take the time to do this. And also, but part of it is to understanding. And one of the chapter, one of the essays that I write is about receiving gifts. And um, there is a practice in Japanese tradition of receiving gifts uh, and with both hands. Mm -hmm. And the idea of that is a symbolic uh, gesture, but it, it but it's also, uh, we do actually extend our hands uh, to receive things. Uh, but uh, the idea of that is that as a receiver, you're also giving, um, you're also graciously and graciously 
um, receiving, you're also giving. And it's reciprocal. We all play a giver's role and a receiver's role, and we appreciate each other's um, uh, genuineness and, and considerations that way. Mm -hmm. And then it really speaks to sort of the interconnection that, that we have, that it's reciprocal, that we share this together. Mm -hmm. And how wonderful too, when people, um, I have to say that I learned to give or to this aspect of this has come because I've been so blessed with generosity that I've received. And, um, and, and that moves me to feel like I want to reciprocate that, um, and pay it forward. Cause I, I've been, um, I have been, uh, moved by people who have been uh, generous toward me and their giving. Uh, so, um, I think sometimes there's this need also while giving is such a valuable thing. I feel it was very interesting you know, looking into even the further meaning of this in Japanese culture as well, is that there is this value to also learning to receive graciously mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, with gratitude. And we, and how wonderful, because I was thinking with my children too, how we can teach that, that, um, I mean, when somebody receives it, it really wants you to make you want to give more mm -hmm. and then you get more and, and it's just, the energy of that just perpetuates. Mm -hmm. um, but we often even like compliments or whenever we receive something, I think the first thing to do is feel like, oh, you know, uh, we don't, you, we don't acknowledge that in its full, full way. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, it's like a gift um, to also, um, to, in, in that we can also be generous in our receiving and to, to say thank you and to be gracious and, to um, feel the love, I mean, to really accept the intentions mm -hmm. that were behind the giving. Well, I think um, from what somebody says um, in the Q and A is that they've watched your development over the years, and you've been uh, maybe awarded for your generosity and and kindness and gratitude by having award winning rapping and even being having a guest appearance on Ellen. So, <laughs> can you talk a little bit about that, like? you know, what you put out in the universe, how it comes back at you? Um, yes. Um, well, I think, well, those two questions are sort of, um, sort of uh, uh, different to me in the sense that um, I was on a rapping competition for, um, for rapping and um, it was a 3M Scotch uh, competition and I was awarded a runner up and that sort of put me into the limelight for rapping. And it was such an interesting journey because I remember being on the show and, and Ellen would ask, you know, why even bother rapping? Like, I mean, people just wrap off the paper and it, it's just, uh, is it not a waste? And I, I remember being somewhat stumped by that in the sense that I didn't have a full answer at the time. And also I, um, I felt I, in the few minutes that were given, you know, in a TV or a, a short interview, you can't really fully answer the question. And I felt somewhat haunted by that a little bit because it was fun and, and of course joyful, but to the degree that what rapping really meant for me in my life, I really didn't feel like I gave that answer justice. And so in that, and that's why for me myself, this opportunity to write a book, I felt like I was given the, um, I was given the, um, this, um, second chance to really deeply give this question uh, what it deserved. And, and I, I, th I think I did that in the book because I it reflect, and I will read a, 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 a segment of the book, but there's something such, so deep uh, within it that only a book can really, or a, a writing can probably express uh, and in this world right now where everything is in sound bites and everything is in like short captions and capturing someone's attention in two minutes, it's, I feel like sometimes I, I can't do it in, in that short time. Mm -hmm. And so, but at least now I have a book. And if you were really wanting to deeply explore this, uh, you could explore it in the book and read it. And I do hope people read the essay because um, it, it just, I think it kind of goes into depth. Um, about the ways in which rapping has uh, enhanced my life and enriched it and allowed me to have a mindfulness practice, allowed for me to really recognize the 
things in my life that were of value to me um, to actually activate gratitude in some way. It uh, offered a, a vehicle to do that for me. And, um, and so these are some of the things that I talk about in the book. And then, and then how to translate that into form is the techniques aspect of it that I share in the book. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that yeah. I think, <laughs> I don't know if I answered your question. No, but... you did, but um, I did, I mean, for, yeah, I, I just want people to know that the book is amazing. Um, <laughs> it's beautiful. It's thoughtful. It's fascinating and it's useful. I think that's the big thing I took away from it is that um, you can put into practice any of it, the gratitude, the wrapping, the the joyfulness, which I think is, is really wonderful. I mean, I, I, it's very rare for me to find a book that I think exudes that, like, I want to do this thing. Um, <laughs> and I loved it. So you can, we actually have the book in the library. Uh, lots of libraries have them have it because it's amazingly good. And um, of course you can buy it, but I want to move into the second part of what you had said you wanted to talk about was um, how you sectioned the book and made decisions about how you, what you were going to write, because there was, there are probably so many stories. How did you choose? Um, it was somewhat of an organic process because I would be looking into why other people would rap or talking to other people and then trying to have memories. And um, I think I'm just going to, I hope this, I could read a, few, a section of my introduction of the book, because yeah. I think in some senses, it really wraps up for me, uh, a lot of the themes that I address in the book came through a memory, a reflection of wrapping, uh, of watching my mother. Um, and I, let me just read this part. Okay. So I, I write that um, I vividly recall when I was a young girl, the feeling of a summer breeze and smell of mothballs as I watched my mother open a chest full of kimonos. Layers of washi paper encased the kimonos and the undergarments were wrapped with an air of gentle confidence that seemed to say you too are worthy of appreciation and love. My mother's hand glided over the wrapping paper carefully before slowly untying the string. She talked about the artisans of Japan who took thoughtful pride in their work to assure the protection of the kimonos. I could almost feel their labor of love. I have no memory of the kimonos themselves, but do remember the details of how they were packaged, the brown edges of washi paper aged from years gone by, and the ritual of the unwrapping still mesmerizes me, and I recollect the elements in slow motion. Most of all, I remember how this act transported my mother to a tranquil state of reflection. The kimono chest was my mother's dowry. My grandmother spent her life savings on these hand-stitched kimonos so her daughter could start her married life with belongings of the highest quality. This gift held no use in my mother's new life in the US. With no appropriate occasions, my mother never actually wore the kimonos, but still every summer she gently unwrapped the kimonos, aired them out, then rewrapped them for storage. She did this with the utmost care, with feelings of deep gratitude. My mother often said she could never repay her mother for all the sacrifices she had made. Looking back, I realized that lying inside the memory of my mother and her kimono chest is beautifully wrapped a profound wisdom imbued in Japanese values and traditions. My love for wrapping and packaging has its origins in this memory, and the journey of this book is rooted in unwrapping and sharing the hidden treasures within. So, <laughs> so in that memory, in that one caption, I think of, of this glimpse I was able to sort of determine that somehow this act of wrapping was associated with love and that also even the most like to wrap the undergarments were wrapped so beautifully that even some of the most ordinary and small things that support us that you know those things also are worthy of of attention and you know giving care to and the fact that it was reflective, I think it's very meditative. You know, the act of wrapping and unwrapping is very meditative and reflective and grounding. Um, I think the fact that it was an expression of gratitude, you know, it was just associated with, imbued with feelings of gratitude. And um, so I think all these, um, and then there was this part about the Japanese artisans taking pride in the protection of the kimonos, because some of the wrapping is also not about toward just um, the giving part, but also 
to what you're wrapping. It gives um, a regard to and care to the object that you're actually wrapping as well. Mm -hmm. And so all these things just in this one memory, like took me to exploring this aspect of it and amplified it for me in terms of the the actions that it meant for me the fact that it was meditative that was reflect you know it put me in a state of reflection and it's true when I wrap I think it just gives me that few minutes to think about the person that I'm wrapping for or it allows me to be in this fleeting moment just grateful and I think that feeling that it imbues in the act itself um is um, meaningful for me. And so I think, so all of this, and, and I think for me, I, the book is not, I people wouldn't know, but it was actually quite healing because I lost my mother very young. And um, I think it just, the memory of her doing different things like that was just very touching, you know, um, because it was out of love. Mm -hmm. I oh. think I came to, uh, in, in the memory of that reflection, I, I um, saw that. Mm -hmm. so yeah again that's beautiful I loved I loved everything that you just said um and you're reading thank you so much for doing that and sharing a part of yourself with us um in such a in, in such a wonderful way but um so that is a really interesting ju again juxtaposition between in the U.S. when as Ellen said what do you do why do you do this when people just rip it open and it doesn't matter and they you know the paper just ends up in the trash so um how do you get from that to like really um, appreciating what you've received and the work that's gone into wrapping it? Um, and, and this is why I think the book, I hope, gives um, like, you know, like to be the voice for those wrappers who do take the time. And I, in Japan, they say that wrapping is um, sort of like wrapping of the giver's heart. You know, and I think we often don't um, look at when we receive gifts, we're not looking at the emotions of the heart of the person that's giving it. And and maybe it's it's in seeing, it, it's in recognizing that that is sort of uh, the approach, like in how we learn to receive it, I think sort of answers that question in the way that, you know, if we take the time to really look at and, and those are the real gifts, because I think material gifts have a shelf life, but I think what that person is trying to convey to you or let you know, or expressions, those are things that have, you know, that unrepayable, like they don't have a price tag to that. And so something like that is what uh, is left behind. Mm -hmm. And I think that is, to me, what rap wrapping sort of represents. And sometimes you don't even have the perfect gift for somebody, but I think you can imbue what that meaning was through something you create. And, and when people keep the things that I've given them, or they tell me that, that they just, you know, I find it in something that they have all kept for a while or something. It means so much to me because I gave it with, and not that people should keep it because I, I think you can't keep everything. And one of the things I love about wrapping is, is sort of an art form is that you're not really there's no need. It's ephemeral. It's it's meant for that moment. And it, you don't need necessarily to keep it. But in the event that sometimes people do, um, it's, it's it's so touching for me, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like a sandcastle. I have to say, going back a little bit, I think it's hilarious that you came in second place on that rap, uh, the wrapping show because it was by 3M, the tape company. You don't use tape. For your, for your wrapping. Well, so you know, I, I have to tell you, I write this in the book, but I love tape. And I think for the person that um, wraps, it's probably one of the most useful inventions <laughs> that was created. I I have to say that, I mean, that is, was very challenging for, for you to not, for not to do that. But I think I was... Um, for two reasons, I think I was channeling the the people that have talked to me and the people who are the ones that are, you know, doing the work to um, create a sustainable environment. And also, um, I think, and what touched me about that is really my love for nature. I think I, I, uh, that was something that I deeply wrote about in the book, because, uh, because it was in the presence of nature that so many of these uh, writings came to me through, through just appreciating the uh, nature. And um, I think it's maybe my love for that to, to also kind of um, 
want to sort of move toward a direction that you know, uh, was sustainable. And this was really just listening to some of the, what people have come to me to ask for suggestions. And I kind of took on the challenge in the book. I thought if I'm writing the book, I think there's many books that, you know, have other ways of wrapping, but I could do an entire book and challenge myself and, um, and offer a solution, um, that was sustainable, but yet rooted not in just, Ironically, sustainability and gratitude are intertwined. I think it's it's if you you can't not be concerned of the environment and not have a sense of gratitude for it, you know. And so I'm not perfect. I I, I still I mean you know I think that we can only take it in in small pieces, but I think every little bit counts. And interestingly enough, like uh, looking at the history, there was a time where wrapping is, in, especially in the Japanese uh, history of wrapping that I was able to look in thousand of years old. And, you know, I kind of channeled that time where you really didn't have anything and you could literally just take a piece of paper and you can wrap and people still did. And, um, and so everything in the book is, so I really, I have some tools that I think are nice to enhance, but pretty much you can take a piece of paper and wrap or a fabric and, and wrap and um, and then imbue it with, um, I like to say imbue it with nature, things from nature as, as accessories um, or, you know, repurpose papers, like reuse papers, um, use it from old library cards, whatever that you, know, that you can repurpose it into a new direction. Um, but I, yeah, for sure. It's just, uh, uh, but I, 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 I have to say, I, I I do love, I still um, love tape, but I now have challenged myself to use it uh, maybe minimally if I have to, but I, I, I was so proud of myself that this entire book I could configure without it, you know? Um, and, um, and then I'll show you a little bit of the techniques of my, of now, everyone asked me now, did your wrapping styles evolve over time? And, you know, it has changed, you know, you, you learn things, people, you know, come to you and express certain concerns, or they have, um, they want you to come up with different ideas. And I think over the times I've sort of incorporated um, a lot of the inspiration that, you know, people have shared with me and, um, you know, and it evolved into what it is. And sometimes in limitations, you know, creativity can be born from limitations actually. <laughs> and, 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 uh, I think some of the ways that I'll show, I'll show you a little bit of examples later, but, um, but I really love them now. And I don't know if I, I, I love what came out of it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, people are really anxious to get to the more techniques and, um, and, uh, examples that you've shared, you're going to share with us. But, um, I love that concept of like being able to use anything that you have around, you're not going to the store and buying something glittery, but using what you have around to um, make these beautiful objects and, um, reusing things. So like I use, I love comics. So I always use the comics when I'm wrapping gifts or used to wrap gifts for the kids when they were little, um, Grace asks, does the idea of wabi-sabi also play a part in your gift wrapping? Um, yes, um, wabi-sabi was um, um, a great inspiration for me. Um, a couple of, um, well, I um, wabi-sabi was for me initially always um, an aesthetic ideal uh, where you value the weathered, the things that are somewhat aged, but finding beauty in the aging. And, you know, so it was sort of an aesthetic ideal, but I came across a, a book that's written by Beth Kempton, Wabi Sabi. She wrote a book called Wabi Sabi uh, that what inspired me was that she also wrote about Wabi Sabi as um, a way to view life and the way to also live life. And I think something about that really resonated with me because it is um, the love of imperfections. It's the um, it's seeing beauty in the transience of things and the imperfections around us, and and finding beauty in also pain as well as in the things that are you know joyful. And um, and it's it's a it's a word that's so difficult to define because even in the Japanese dictionary, there's not really a word that defines it. And I thought that book did such a great job with it. And in fact. Um, Beth wrote the forward to my book. And I have a funny story with this because I the the how this book came about was it's an incredible story. 
but um, I had purchased, I had bought the book Wabi Sabi for her book. And I um, happened to see that she was giving a um, giveaway for a book proposal masterclass. And I took it. And, um, and the introduction to the book that I wrote, the kimono was out of a meditation exercise that she had in the class that said to go into this sort of a meditation and see what you write from that. And literally what I wrote from that, it just literally verbatim came off of, came out of me and it became my, my actual proposal, uh, submission, uh, itself. And it stayed without being edited in the book. <laughs> so, so it's just something about it. It's this, there is, it's something very, um, mystical and magical about that. And, um, and then at the time that I had that, that I was writing this American Craft Council had featured my work in their magazine and the publisher, Deborah Belmuth, uh, saw it and reached out to me. And I had the proposal, like I had already written it. And it's funny because she had said uh, in the comp, you know, in the giveaway, you have to write, well, if you were to take get the class, what would you write about? And I actually posted what I wrote about because I literally wrote, I said, there's something about the art of wrapping that has deeper meaning. And I've always wanted to give a voice to that. And that is what I would write about if I were to be able, you know, if I were to win the class and take this class. And and that class, um, you know, led me in and, and Beth wrote the four to my book. And so it's just, um, I, I'm just, it's such a miraculous thing that the story of how this all sort of came together and um, kind of a, a little preparation meets opportunity story for sure. I mean, and so that, I, was, I, that was Beth Kemp, you said? Kempton. 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 Okay. Um, yeah. All right. So let's talk a little bit about technique. Um, what, what would you want us to walk away from, from this talk about like the the things that we should remember when we're trying to wrap. Um, our, Are you talking um, about the meaning part or the, uh, for the techniques parts? The technique part. The technique part. Okay. So, um, so let me just give you just a few things that I, uh, I want to show you about the wrapping method. I'll start with um, the wrapping that I actually came up with. I love wrapping books. And so my very first experiment was to try to wrap a book uh, without tape. And um, it was actually... <laughs> trying to like came out of an inspiration of, 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 of folding actually like clothes and fabric. I, I sort of started off with that and then sort of incorporated sort of an origami type of fold into the wrapping. But um, I actually love this way of wrapping. I, I don't know if you could see this now. Yeah, um, we can see it. Okay. So here we are. Um, so this, this is the, how to wrap a book uh, without tape. Um, and what I, created for this is that it opens up like a, a an unveiling sort of it has this way of just uh because it was designed for books I just wanted it to like wow you know to have the factor of when you opened up a gift and um I also uh, you know for me the intention is always important to express so for me pockets are somewhat important I I wanted that you know usually a note card or something to be uh, but, and I just wanted to create a little pocket here so that like you can take a note card and just uh, be able to stick it in easily like that. Um, I, I I just thought the, the pocket part for me was something that uh, I wanted to incorporate in the design. And then uh, also it really allows like I hole punch here. And sometimes like this is another thing I teach in the book, but you can make out of maps. I just used an old map here, but I could you could make your own uh, bow out of the map. And um, and then use a brass fastener to like just tie it, just to put it up here like this. And then that could also become an embellishment for your gift. Um, and then I, I also like to use um, sort of nature products too. So, you know, I, I just the opening for me has so many different options, but you know, you can put like, let's say, you know, this is a little something from my lemon tree, but you can just add a little nice element of, of nature from, you know, your garden or just a little flower, you can, you know, add a little color and it just adds a little something that could be um, added as part of, and this is where I feel like you can embellish with um, 
a color that reminds you of a person or a favorite flower or something that you pick up from the side of the street that's I always say I, I always like to pick up the wildflowers on the street and put it on um but it and it just allows that moment now you have the structure it's just nice to have the structure and then you can add um and I like for example like with this card I kind of like to usually use some of the remnants that come off of the, the paper and use them again in some other way. So sometimes just putting them on the card to kind of go with the gift makes it kind of a nice accompaniment to each other. Um, but it's also a good way to use up your scrap papers in a creative way and kind of um, utilize everything that 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 you use. And so, yeah, so it's, so, so it's literally like taking a map like this that's just that there's uh, many maps now that you could probably find and then and then making a gift package out of it so this is and what I wanted to share with you too is what I love about this is a book but now I wrapped everything like this for example was a chocolate bar <laughs> that um I just like this is a little coffee chocolate bar here <laughs> but it actually works really well for like even a chocolate bar um and um, I just kind of, you know, so it's actually become my go-to wrap for, you know, flat items. It actually works for also boxes that are uh, that are thick and long as well. Um, initially, I did it for books, but it just became my favorite wrapping because I could do it for so many things. Mm -hmm. It's the most versatile one of all the ones that I that I introduce in the book. Um, can, you, um, can, can you wrap? Uh, in that method with cloth as well as paper? Yes. And it's so funny. Oh my gosh. I, I, I don't even, I think I have, I wonder if I have it. Okay. So this is so funny. I tell you, um, I, I, I learned this from, um, I think if I have a wrapping, I just think it's, it's just, I need the perfect size, but I literally took, oh, here's one. Okay. So I literally took, a, this is a napkin for, um, for, um, out of, you know, the table napkins, you know, and I did, I was going to put this on my reel, but I thought people were going to think this is too easy. This is, you shouldn't do this, but I want to show you because I'm so excited about it is that you could, it's just literally take like a napkin. Can you see this? Um, so I just take, let's see, how's it looking here? So I, you know, you can take like a, uh, this is just a square napkin, but, um, you can just close it like this you know, just a, this is just a table napkin and, and actually it's much more forgiving than, um, than, um, let's see how, I'm not sure my, my camera here. Um, uh, it's more forgiving than, uh, paper, but yes, you can. And so I could take this and put this inside here. It's almost like the same method. Do you see this? Um, from the took, corner, yeah. yes. Uh, let's see. I'm not, no, I'm I terrible with this. Yeah. So, so do you see how I, you could just take a, like a table napkin and then, and then fold it into this place. And then it's so beautiful. Like if you're just going to put like, you know, uh, some kind of a, uh, something to add to that or something like that, but it's totally possible. And this is not necessarily the Froschke rep method. Uh, you know, this is just something that I sort of mimicked off of the, um, off of the uh, no tape method. But you could do that with fabric. You can use the same method. It, you just don't need that fold with uh, with fabric. Um, I also do do teach traditional Japanese, a few Japanese furoshiki methods as well. Um, but um, and teaching how to do a tie and and the meaning behind a tie and so forth are also part of the um, things that you can learn in the book. Mm -hmm. um, so um, so yes to answer your question about fabric. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about with techniques um, is that I teach how to, to make the traditional Japanese origami boxes. And um, this is, uh, this one here is actually a box that I made from old, it's a wrapping paper from an old Japanese store. And I just made these into like triangle boxes with a little embellishment so you could see the boxes. Um, and then um, speaking of you like library things and so forth. So, I mean, here's a box I made from newspaper. Um, see how this is? It's just literally a newspaper that I kind of folded into a box. This is from an architectural, old architectural rendering. Um, um, Megumi, can I interrupt for a second? Sure. Um, how do you, for like boxes, how, for, especially with paper, how do you 
uh, how do they keep their form? How do they keep their structure? So um, this is the, the I find fascinating about um, origami techniques is that you can um, it's in the the way of the full, a thicker paper, obviously could help with the structure that you can make it stronger. Um, you could put a, a cardboard or something like that to put on the bottom if you needed to have it hold something. I usually could use a thicker, like sometimes I uh, repurpose posters, things like that, that have a thicker material that make the box actually thick themselves. So um, depending on what you want to use it for, like newspaper is very um, thin. So it's probably for light objects. And then if you want it to hold something, I usually cut a, like a cardboard or, um, and then put it as the base so that it holds the, the item itself. Um, or you could just use thicker paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Would you uh, mind, um, I don't know how, how, if this would take too long, but would you mind the first thing that you showed the paper that overlaps would, would it be possible for you to just show a quick, like, how did you fold it so that it, it folded into itself? You mean the uh, no tape uh, book? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, um, so, um, and I'll, for all those that are interested, um, um, my publisher posted the the a reel of me doing this, so you can catch that on my Instagram or on uh, on the story publishing site. But um, to kind of look at uh, how to do this, but uh, the. The key here is, um, I, I don't know if you could see this, but um, yeah, here, uh, what you're doing is you fold the paper, you're, you're creating the folds inside here. So it creates just a little lip. You know, uh, you start off by folding this on the opposite side. So it gives you the, the flap to create the band. And you want the paper to be sort of about three fourths covering the, the book. And then this side, you want the paper originally to almost kind of come to the edge or three quarters is fine, depending how thick you want the band. But then you fold the, these edge papers down like so that that becomes, and, and you can measure it at this point to see where, where this band is gonna land before you wrap so you can close it sort of comes like this. And then you want to um, sort of crease right here so you know where the edge of the, the book is like this. And it helps to actually um, crease this entirely at the edges and then almost like an enclosure, you know, you can put the book in. And why that's important is that it, when you then um, turn the paper around like this, um, it almost, the you create this little tuck in here, like you put your finger in the middle of where your box is and create this little fold, lift up the fold. And this is a technique that's also similar to the origami box is that once you make those folds and you bring in the folds, the, bot, the top of the paper will flip up for you. And it sort of almost does the work of like covering that paper for you. So it just, you don't have, you don't have it. The, the fold itself helps you to guide that paper. And then you turn it around and you do the same thing to this side of the paper and fold it in like this. And then this will fold in like this. And then you just tuck it in with that. So like no this. tape, no glue, right? No tape, no glue. Yeah, exactly. So it just will kind of sit in like this. I don't know if you could see it. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Yes, we have some links in the chat of, too about how to find those videos. So that's great. Do you have a YouTube channel where we can see some of these? No YouTube channel uh, right now, but right now I've been uh, posting. Uh, my son's been helping me with reels. And uh, <laughs> so uh, you will be able to find a few of the techniques on on the um on Instagram. And um, I, I have, I'm also on um, a creative bug site where I do do one, uh, do a wrap of uh, in fabric. Uh, and, um, and then the book is, there's a reel on uh, that uh, is posted on my website as well. And you can, um, not website, but Instagram, and you can, um, you can take it and look at, look at it for guidance. And the book, I mean, the, the book is the, in, all the instructions are in the book. Some people, um, you know, I, I am actually a visual learner as well. So I can kind of see how if you can combine looking at the visuals, like, for example, that I might have on Instagram and 
then also look at the book. You'll it, it'll come together a lot easier. I, I have to say that um, I have such off for um, instructions because. Um, you know, in publishing a book, I, I just realized that there's so many eyes that look at the instructions. It's like, it's not just me. I have my, uh, my instructions, but then it goes through different editing processes to, to um, like, I think in a cookbook recipe, similar to that, they were, there's probably testing of the recipes, but um, I'm so confident about um, the instructions that if you follow them, you know, you'll get to the end result of what you need to do. And origami is, to me, sometimes I get very uh, overwhelmed because there's so many steps and you have to sort of condense them down to um, a few of them. But the ones that I remember are related to wrapping. And um, and once you get them, um, they just stay with you. And also you realize that each fold has a significance of uh, in, in that how it helps you get to the next step. Mm -hmm. And you realize, but you can't really rush it because if you do, then you kind of pay the price, like in the way the box comes out. So you have to really be mindful of each step, but knowing and trusting that in doing that, it sort of leads you to a very specific uh, place. And um, so I just encourage you to not get frustrated with it and give it a try and, um, and to sort of stay with it mm -hmm. and make it many times and make it sort of a repertoire because the people who've learned the boxes, they're just so excited about it. I mean, because they use it for so many things. Some people use it not only for wrapping, but for their storage units and putting things in there. And, and they said, sometimes, um, we had a cookie exchange. One of our neighbors had a, invited me to do a box making at a cookie exchange. And we just made the boxes and then put the cookies that everybody exchanged in the boxes. So, you know, there's so many uses for them. And um, and I do a lot of box making for when I make cookies or when I want to just leave something for a neighbor or uh, something very small, but I just need a little container for it. Then I know that with a square piece of paper, I could come up with um, a structure. And so it's such a useful thing. <laughs> my my friend... My friend also says it's so meditative that whenever they get depressed or they get somewhat like they, they they're just down, they just full boxes and they just it seems like it it's a very meditative and grounding kind of thing, you know? Yeah. You said that you teach some classes. Are those online? Is it on your website? Is it something that we can go to? <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I actually, you know, the pandemic, I I haven't taught a, 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 an in per well, I shouldn't say that I've done some demonstrations, but I've not done an in-person class since the pandemic. And then I wrote the book and then I started to write the book and then it just, um, I just have left that. So I, I feel like I, uh, I think in terms of the next steps, I might, will probably think about how I can have that accessible to people. And um, I mean, I, I probably should come up with something like that, you know, uh, so that people can have, I would love to teach uh, the instructions are all in the book. I mean, everything that I talk about here is, is, um, is in the book. And so you can definitely learn it there, but I do feel like taking a class, um, there are just few things that you can kind of uh, share that make it easier or that, um, make it doable and also more fun. So I definitely want to do that. I definitely mm -hmm. want to do that. Yeah. I mean, even online, you can have like sort of a community build when it comes to like this kind of thing, because it's so, it can be so interactive. Um, we have about five more minutes and I just wanted to ask you a couple more questions. So we talked about nature, like taking from nature, you know, uh, keeping, uh, holding on to things, not buying things for, for your wrapping. What are some of the other things that you like to use for, uh, for your, either your paper, like ra actual wrapping or for your decorations? Um, I, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm, I, a lot of my inspiration comes from the kitchen because I sort of wrap while I'm, you know, baking or, you know, wanting to give away food. And so, you know, I've actually, uh, there's a, there's something I make out of cupcake liners in the book and um, parchment paper that I line my cake pans with, I use to wrap and, um, and, you know, magazines I love. Um, and I also love, like you said, paper. So anything like it's a newspaper thing or something like that. Wallpaper, I didn't know that there's ways that uh, you can access wallpaper, but they're actually easy to wrap with and 
beautiful, some beautiful wallpapers that, you know, that are remnants or that are sample remnants that I, that I've gotten. Um, yeah. And I think, um, but I really encourage people to look at materials in a new way, uh, repurposing. There's something about it. I, I quote Dr. Seuss in the book saying, it's not what it is, it's what it can be, you know, and it's, it is, there's just something so wonderfully hopeful about taking something that nobody thought that it was used for, but somehow in your imagination, you could recreate it to something. And there's something just so empowering about that, that, and, and also about something about us that we are not really stuck with just one role. We could be a number of things, you know, so there's some philosophical aspect to repurposing for me. <laughs> I love that because don't we all want to be useful? Yes. And, and we're not, you know, once our purpose in one area is done, it, it, it doesn't mean that we're done. I mean, we could be and become, you know, other things and there's other ways that we can, we can be useful and, and, um, also it, things could be still beautiful. And, um, I like it in gift wrapping because it's shared, it's given, it's, it's, it's in the activation and the sharing and the inter exchange of it that makes it really, really, uh, meaningful. So, yeah. So I know that today is your book birthday and we're very excited about that, but what is up next for you, Megumi? What, what can, what can we look forward to? Well, I know that's a really good question. I, I, I feel like, um, I'm just so, I, I feel like I want to give this the fullest uh, time, uh, because I put so much into it and I think there's so much that could come from this. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, the next step is being grounded in what I have put together and then how to make that, um, useful or to make it, you know, uh, to share it more or to find more venues where, where people can enjoy it or find meaning from it. I can connect with those people. And speaking of libraries, it's like, it would be a joy to, to be able to, um, be in the community with libraries. I would love that. Um, well, and um, you have an open invitation to Ashley <laughs> any time. <laughs> I would absolutely love that. And um, it's all really about sharing. I, I just felt like I wanted to give everything that I knew uh, that could hopefully be useful and to take whatever parts of it that you want to, to take from it. Um, I wanted to add something that was challenging because there are a few things that I reinvent or that I use that could be a little bit more challenging. But then I also do very simple things like bands and ways that you can just like fold one fold and close a, a gift and and you don't really have to do much more than that. And and it's this idea of you keeping it very simple. Um, it's not about you know the complexity or or anything difficult. It's just it's just these are tools that you can use to just uh, implement however way you want that make it a little bit easier for you um, to use as a base and then explore your creativity from there. You know, wow. so basically yeah. anybody can do it. Don't be afraid and no, be, mindful, be mindful about it. Like just think about what you're doing and who you're giving it to and why, what is why? the purpose? <laughs> and I think there's a quote that I say in the book about um, how, you know, we're, I think we're only to be said to be alive when we're, when we're, when we're, um, when we recognize our treasures and it's true. I think it, for me, it, it allows that time to recognize our blessings and the people in our lives that, um, mean something to us. And I think to recognize that is a huge gift. Um, it just makes, you know, our lives and everyone else's lives so much better, um, when we are aware of them and um, so hopefully this is one way I write in the book that, you know, wrapping your gift is not the only way to practice gratitude. And I say, I quote Rumi, I said, you know, there are hundreds of ways to kneel and kiss the ground, <laughs> but the line before it, which is let the beauty you love be what you do. And I feel like I'm sharing the beauty that I love. And so I'm just honored that I get to do that and I get to share it. And, and if it resonates or if it has meaning for you, that would be so joyful for me. Um, and that's sort of the purpose of the book. <laughs> well, um, as I said, we've had people calling us all day saying, you know, I can't wait for this program. I, you know, I can't wait to watch it afterwards, all of that, because what you do is so important and what you've offered to the world is 
um, very meaningful to so many of us. So I want to thank you for being here and for, and I, and I wish you like the best month of, of book tour, because there's nothing better or exhausting than getting your baby out in that world. Yes. But the experiences like this is really makes it so worthwhile. And I think I just to be able to connect with everyone and to talk about these things is such a, it's really just such a privilege. And, um, and to have that moment to do that, I'm, I think I should just embrace it. And, um, and really to thank everybody that has, you know, is supportive of it, and that's been open to it. Um, and like I said, I, I just wind up giving more because of what I receive. And um, I think, um, so gratitude, I really encourage, I, I, I write at the end of the book about, um, reflecting on that to be grateful to express your gratitude when, whenever you can and let that be a um a regular practice in our lives and however way we want to express that wrapping is one way and uh yeah so hopefully it's something that is a takeaway uh one takeaway uh for everyone well i definitely got that when i read it so i appreciate that and i really appreciate everybody being here tonight and enjoying this Thank talk you. with us and um Megumi, I will look forward to uh, finding you in Ashland at some point. Oh, I'd love to get there. <laughs> I would love to get awesome. there. Thank you so much for having me and and really having the foresight to do this on my book pub day, which is <laughs> extremely special. I get to share this moment with all of you and it will be a, it's a historic day for my life. And so I'm just so glad I get to share it with everybody and to also my friends out there who I can't see, but I wanted to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish you well, like I said, not just in the next month for it, but always. And for everybody, have a wonderful night. Happy wrapping. Um, yes, happy wrapping. <laughs> wrapping uh, coming up in your future. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>